in this lecture we'll talk about uh, sentence relations and and truth and in this regard we'll talk about various perspectives and theories especially fo uh, focusing on truth and logic and how these uh, various perspectives help us figure out the meanings of sentences in, in certain conditions and this is just one perspective of how we can find the meaning of sentences in the beginning i'll talk about the relationship between logic and truth and how they help each other especially how logic helps us to find the meaning or truth value of sentences uh, this view comes from richard montague who, who proposed that the principles of classical lo logic can be used to find the meanings of sentences and he proposed that if we could figure out the uh, the truth value of sentences we we could also find the meanings of sentences according to him probably the truth value uh, is actually the meanings of sentences in this regard the classical logic which comes to us from uh, classical aristotle is used uh, to create certain conditions under which we can find the meanings of the sentences so Therefore, Aristotelian logic is probably at the basis of our quest for finding sentence meaning through, uh, through their truth value. And this traditional logic actually works on finding various ways how arguments, valid arguments could be constructed uh, in, in a way which can make us reach to the meanings of those sentences. And it also helps us to understand how we could infer or find conclusions from those arguments. So, in short, uh, this knowledge of logic and meaning help us to understand or find a connection between the meaning and the arguments through which we reach uh, to those meanings and how those meanings could be, uh, could be understood or inferred in certain re real situations. I'll just give you an example here of logic and truth and this is one of the popular forms of traditional logic which comes to us from great Aristotle uh, and we name it in logic modus ponens. In modus ponens it's, it's a well-known example of Aristotle's logic patterns. In this a type of argument is presented in three instances then we reach to, to a conclusion. At first st step we have a premises and in front of you, you can see the premises is if Ali left work early, then he is in the sports club. That means it proposes a condition. If something happens, then other thing would happen. If Ali has left the work early, then he is in the sports club. B argument is Ali left work early. That means according to this pattern of logic that if Ali has left work early, then he must be in the sports club. Then he is, if A is true, uh, then B should be true. That means, and we, we can present this argument in terms of symbols. Uh, if you just look at on the right side of your screen, you can find a diagram here which shows P leads to Q. That means one argument leads to another and P is there. If P is there, then the conclusion would be Q. The conclusion which has been shown by a segregation of, of a straight line, linear line, that is conclusion. The C in front of you is the conclusion. If step A and B, which are usually called premises, are true, then step C, which is conclusion, is also granted to be true. In this situation, you can see that we have reached to a conclusion which is, which is C based on the arguments presented before the line, uh, which are A and B argument. We have set a condition. If A happens, then B. So A happens, then B has to happen or B has happened. Let's move forward. A horizontal line, as I have just said, uh, is used to separate the premises, which is, which is the initial arguments of, of an overall argument, an initial contents or parts of the overall argument, and the conclusion. And the statement which is written uh, below the line, this horizontal line, is, is usually the conclusion in traditional logic. There could be other forms of uh, traditional logic as well, uh, which includes modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, and disjunctive syllogism. And these are only very few ones. There, there, there are huge numbers of uh, argument building 
techniques and traditional logic and obviously because of the limitations of space and time we cannot uh, address or we cannot talk about all of those so i'll just present you a few examples of uh, the types of arguments which are written in front of you in the following slides we'll have a quick look on on the examples of these types of arguments here in front of you is modus tollens which is again an argument which is in the same shape as we have seen previously it's a mode of logical reasoning from a hypothetical proposition according to which if the constituent be denied the antecedent is also denied that means if a is true b is true but if b is false therefore a is false if b is not there if the a condition is set and that condition is not met then the argument overall argument may be questioned let's have a quick look on the example itself in modus tollens p implies q and if the q is negated the consequent is negated then p is also negated let's see if ali has arrived then he is in the club if ali has arrived then he is in the club in simple words agar wo pahunch chuka hai to wo is waqt flan jagah pe hoga let's say club mein hoga ali is not in the club that means ki wo abhi tak pahuncha hi nahi hai agar ali aaya hai to wo club mein hoga ali club mein nahi hai to we could assume we could conclude ki wo abhi tak pahuncha hi nahi hai so ali has not reached ali has not arrived that is the conclusion which is very common sensical if you look at the patterns of our daily talk or how we reach to certain logical conclusions in our daily communication or daily interactions you will see this fits fits in all those argumentations very well so this is very common sensical one thing i would like to mention here that not all kinds of uh, argument would fit in in our all segments of reality the arguments i mentioned previously might fit in in a different situation and this argument might fit in a different situation so we need to decide as a vigilant users of language and logic that which argument is more useful to decide about the meaning of a certain sentence and you could see the diagrammatical presentation of this kind of argument a p is leading to q that means if p then q not p then no q p has ali has not arrived ali is not in the club then then the consequent would be different uh, let's move forward to another kind of argument which is hypothetical syllogism it's a kind of a syllogism which has conditional statements for one or both of its premises and it's a multi layered argument it's not as simple if then we have more premises here and for that we are we are extending our argument from p and q to r or r also which you can see on your screen it is also called chain argument because it is based on a transition you can see the example here if ali is in the club then he is drinking juice if ali is drinking juice then he is drinking pineapple right the argument is in a kind of chain then conclude that if ali is in the club then he is drinking pineapple so the argument in between is is dropped for the sake of clear argument or clear conclusion we can say that if he is in the club he is definitely drinking pineapple so diagrammatical presentation could be p leads to q and q leads to r and then conclusion is that p leads to r so in between things are assumed to be true if that is true then we have disjunctive syllogism which is in parts it is an either or kind of argument one of the premises could be true and not both can be true in disjunctive syllogism let's have a look it's a valid argument form which is a syllogism having a disjunctive statement for one of its premises only one of the premise can be true if p is true then q is false and vice versa because it this is either or relationship example is ali is in the club or he is in the lounge ali is not in the club so what could be the conclusion he could be either here or there he is not here then he is there he is in the lounge ali is in the lounge so the argument could be presented this sign in front of you v like sign is either or sign in traditional logic so it's p or q it's not p then definitely q this is how we present it in traditional logic a part of the study based on logic focuses on finding the truth and what is truth truth is not uh, something which is which is universal in 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 form of truth conditions or logic rather 
something which is very close to common sense and which uh, which corresponds to to the facts around us it is not contrary to the facts it also uh, gives us a correct description of the states of affairs for example we say if if i say that my father is the first ma uh, person to visit mars so this statement could be judged in certain conditions uh, or in certain situations in in my father must have lived in so uh, we can see if my father we could check the life history of my father and you could see if he went to mars and he was the first one to reach reach the mars then this statement is true and in all other conditions this statement is false so we could build conditions for all uh, for most of uh, events or most of the statements we make in our life and we could check their truth truth value which can help us to reach its meanings